it's day 371 coming up we're moving a big dumper uh, cherry picker a big puddle and um, I explain the economics of YouTube and the sprayer and have a little bit of a rant about glyphosate as well well have a rant about people that don't understand glyphosate hope you can hear me for the win different scenery today up in the hills all the cherry picking taking the dumper back go on keep going at that Go on, go on, go on, go on. All loaded up now, ready to go. Different roads around here. The old Valtra, it's how much spreader should be returned after it's been out on hire. Look at that. It's like new. It's actually, it's actually cleaner than when it was new. Let's have a look at your face though. <laughs> a little bit dirty. <laughs> Oh, it's meant that. Back out now, putting the rest of the liquid fertiliser on the barley. I've got three fields to do, and hopefully I can just about get it in two tankfuls. But to be fair, if we had a new sprayer, I wouldn't have got it in one, because I need it's just short of 6,000 litres, and the new sprayer is only going to be 5,600 litres. Um, so, not really time saving today, but yesterday, I think I'd have saved over an hour and a half with the biggest sprayer. Back into a corner, sorry. Um, I put a post on Facebook and Twitter and different things about how it's a bit mad out. I never realised I'd end up doing videos on YouTube and actually making money out of it. Like I say, it all started as a joke. And, um, someone asked me would I put one on YouTube so they could show some kids in the classroom, and that's how it kind of started. And then, you know, a year later now, there's 11,000 subscribers. And, um, it hasn't really got anything to do with the amount of subscribers I've got. You do have to have a thousand before YouTube will monetize it, but you have to have so many watched hours, and I've well got that because I put so many videos on. You need 4,000 watch hours, and at the time when YouTube decided to put adverts and whatever and pay me to water them, I think I had something like 695,000 watched hours, and it's it's over the million or something now. I don't quite know the exact figure. Someone geeky will be able to tell me, I'm sure. But I'm obviously going to buy a sprayer. Well, the sprayer is going to cost north of 200,000. But I have got a trade in this one. So realistically, YouTube over the next sort of five or seven years, depending on how long we finance it, has to pay me sort of like 180,000 quid. Now that's a lot of money. That or it's between two and three thousand pound a month. Now I'm not at that level yet. But if the growth carried on as it has in the last three months, potentially by June, July, when the spray will arrive, YouTube will be will be nearly paying me that towards it. And I just think it's staggering really, because you could probably buy a house with that money. And if you just weren't farming, it's, a, it's an eye water and a mouth. But when you farm it, it it's lost. In everything else that you have to buy, you know, your, your fertilizer bill each year, your, your, you know, labor, diesel, chemicals, finance on HP and stuff like that. And don't get me wrong, it's great, it's gonna help the business. But you sometimes think, if I didn't farm, I could pay me mortgage back with YouTube, and you know, that that's the crazy thing about it. But I, um, it's like accidental as well, that's the other thing I can't get my head around. So, since sort of being a partner, if you will, in the farm, you don't really get a wage anymore, you just take what you need to live off. Well, I feel like there's a wage now coming through YouTube, despite the fact it's going into the farm and it's gonna buy machinery. But there's, there's, there's you can see every, every month an amount will go in, and I've not had to burn any diesel, grow any crops, it's not had to rain, the sun's not had to shine not had to rent any land or buy any specialist quit equipment and and there's this income stream suddenly now just come out of thin air accidentally and it, I don't know how to explain it it's, it's a bit mind-boggling really but it's just the sheer numbers of, of people in the world you know a, a tiny tiny percentage of them watch what I'm up to each day I don't know whether it's to learn anything or just out of nosiness or whatever but, you know thanks for watching because it, it it's, it's 
making a difference to to the farm. And then the other thing as well is, I never had a hobby. I had loads of people say, oh, what do you do when you're not farming? Have you got any hobbies? And I, and I could never answer them. And I, I think I've got a hobby now. It's, it's making videos. And then the mad thing is with that is, it, it like, it's paying as well. So, I mean, I know some people do craft and different things or woodwork and make things as a hobby and, and sell them on you know, different things like Etsy or things like that. Well, I suppose now I've got a hobby that pays as well. And the best thing is, is I'm just doing what I enjoy doing every day. You know, I feel sorry for you guys that watch it every night because some days I think I've had a bad day and it's probably depressing to watch. But um, I suppose if you've had a bad day and you see that someone else has, maybe it makes people feel better perhaps. I mean, it's rained today and I've not got done what I wanted to get done, but I did know it was going to rain. So it doesn't, doesn't really bother me because at least I can still get on with this liquid fur. I mean, that is the advantage of liquid fertilizer. You know, if we were gonna put bag granular fertilizer on now with this wind, it'd just be impossible. It just, it just wouldn't spread wide enough because you throw it into the wind and it just drops short and we'd end up with stripes in the field. But with liquid fertilizer, you, you, can, you can just go, as long as you're not making a mess and messing up the tram lines where they're gonna lie water. Anyway, look, luckily today, it, it's not quite um, that bad this wind is carrying quite a bit of moisture around the field. Just sort of explain some of the economics as well around spraying. So every field gets sprayed, I don't know, between five and eight times a year maybe, with either liquid fertilizer, fungicide, herbicides, and things like that. So on the acreage I'm farming at the moment, if I got a contract to do that, it'd be between 80 and 90,000 pound a year to pay a contractor to do it. So if I can buy a sprayer for 25 to 30,000 pound a year, that obviously makes financial sense. Now, admittedly, I've got to put diesel in it and a man to drive it and fill it with water. But that's, I mean, you, you can take someone on. If you, if you took someone on, so I'll give you a job, it's 25 grand a year and you've only got to do 500 hours a year on spray it. Someone would bite your hand off, wouldn't they? And as for the diesel, I mean, I'd be surprised if it used three or 4,000 litres of diesel a year, maybe five tops. So, you know, that, that's like two and a half grand. So the, the, the economics of, of owning our own sprayer work. The other thing is, of our 25,000, 30,000 a year in HP to buy one, at the end of the day, in five, 10 years time, that machine still has a value just like this one does now. So it hasn't really cost you that because you've, you've put it into the machine as residual value, but the new ones go up. So you never see it unless you retire. But it is obviously handy put into the next machine because it reduces your payments. So if you can buy them right and um, you don't depreciate, you end up with obviously not really a nest egg, but you've got some capital in there. So if you ever decided, oh, I've had enough farming, I'm going to go and do something else. You know, the, the machinery could be sold off then and, and used to invest into something else or, you know, pay off other parts of the business that might not be doing as well. While we're on the subject of machinery, um, it's the same with the tractors and the combine. You know, we I needed to do the job, I needed to do the work. We we finance them over normally about five years, and that fits then the monthly cost or the yearly cost of what we need the tractors for doing the job. And if we buy the right tractor at the right time and the right spec, hopefully it doesn't depreciate too much. And all the time we're building equity into it. I can say the new ones go up, but doesn't matter because it means the tradings then go up and then the trading obviously then if it's got a lot of money in it that's your um, deposit for your next one and that's for the end of the day when you decide you've had enough does anyone know what that is i'll put it near the camera um and also if you do why is there over 150 of them on this sprayer like what does it do and what's it for I'm not sure if you can see on the camera, but can you see that's got like a yellow tinge to it? Well, that was the ryegrass we killed off, I don't know, uh, just over two weeks ago now. I think it was 16 days ago we sprayed it for ryegrass. Um, so that's what it's dying, so that's the barley. And then obviously that's barley with a bit of ryegrass in, which is now dying. There's a flood, they're not all gone. It's a fair flood, that. Um, it's always been like that to be honest this field, it's just a massive depression. I don't know whether it's a bomb hole, um, 
some fields have what we call bomb holes in, which is where they were trying to bomb the railway over there or Liverpool during the war. We're in the war. And then um, obviously moved all the soil out and they've never particularly been filled in properly. Talking of Uncle Albert and boats, the uh, the boat that's stuck in the Panama Canal, I tried to work out, it weighs 200,000 tonnes and I, it doesn't seem to sit in the water very deep. And not the Panama Canal, the uh, Suez Canal. And apparently, it's only 24 metres deep, that canal, in places. Well, this boom's 36 metres wide, it doesn't sound a lot, but that boat, the water it displaces to float, is 200,000 tonnes of water and it potentially could displace 2 million tonnes of water if it's set a bit lower in the, in, in the, in the canal if it's sat to 24 metres but it doesn't, it only sits to 8 I think but apparently at the, butt, at the edges it's not 8 metres deep and that's why it's got stuck a little known fact, a bit of a YouTube, a bit of random googling from me before I knocked the end two sections off so I've had to do a little bit again with just the two end sections on down there so uh, I'm going to go around the end by mistake I think if they're back in that big flood, I'll, um, I'll get stuck, but it would make a really cool picture. But there's only one way to find out. So it did make a really cool picture, but to be honest, there's a method in my madness. It's heavy clay, it's wet. I've now got clean wheels, whereas before I had little bits of soil stuck all the way around them. So when I pull out on that road, it, it would have made a mess. Whereas now the wheels are clean, it's just, just wet. This is the last tank now on the barley, and then all the barley's got is uh, double 17, which is 70% nitrogen and 17% sulfur. So yesterday's quiz question was this, it's basically for cracking nuts that have seized. So you put it over the nut head, like so. Let me find one. So, if you've got a bolt, pretend it's got a nut on it, slide it over the top, bind the thread in, and that's like a chisel point, then it splits it in half. So it, cracks it off the top yeah so ben goldsmith has basically put a picture on uh, twitter of a field that's been sprayed off with glyphosate which is obviously a herbicide so it kills all the weeds and different things and then we drill the new crop in so it's like disinfectant so in a hospital you clean all the germs in a field you clean all the weeds if we didn't clean them with glyphosate we'd have to use tillage now that is an option moving the soil around and different things like that and that's what organic farms do the problem with that is it rains in the UK and that soil then moves around and ends up in the rivers. The other problem is as well is it's not as productive as using glyphosate and there's not, there's an unnatural amount of people alive today because of modern science keeping them alive, whether that be the vaccine or you know different things to treat, different things, diabetes and all stuff like that. So because we've got seven, eight million people alive in the world, which really all should subscribe, then we need science to feed them and we need to save the soils. Now, if glyphosate was invented today, it'd be celebrated because it's this amazing chemical that could kill weeds and keep the, and maintain the soils and, and help them grow. So cover crops killed with glyphosate, then turn into carbon and fix it into the soils. But Ben Goldsmith, who's, who's a billionaire, has decided that he thinks that it's bad. So he puts rubbish on Twitter going, oh, look how terrible this field looks because it's all yellow and dead. Well, that's what happens in the summer anyway. Fields go yellow and dead called ripening so we call it sunshine in a can glyphosate because it creates a fake summer for that plant and makes it die off and then we can put something else in that people to grow and people can eat you know it's just crazy that he he doesn't understand it but he just thinks he can talk about it and, and that's what winds me up and that's why social media can be really bad and that's probably one of the reasons why i started doing these videos ages ago to educate people sorry just to the side there i've got nothing against ben goldsmith being a billionaire but anything that makes food production less productive can push the price of it up. And people in other countries can't afford it. So he he personally will probably never go hungry, but other people will if we can't produce enough food to feed them. Anyway, that's enough of a rant today. Um, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. Bit of a boring one today because I've been sat in the spray most of the day. Other than picking that double rub and moving the cherry picker, cherry picker. So I'll uh, see you all tomorrow. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you don't haven't also. And apparently you can click the bell thing and it'll tell you when I put a video up as well. So there's a, a, an outro that someone's done for me. Ben Armstrong sent me this one on Instagram. So 
here it is and don't forget if you want to do one send it on instagram and uh, make sure it's landscape and i'll put them on the end of the videos so thanks for watching